Hello, my name is Jaron Rosenberg, I'm a senior architect with Cadence and we're going to introduce and demonstrate today the Accelera Portable Stimuli Standard. Motivation for this uh, video, Accelera just announced the early adopter version. This is a, a, a review version for the public. We highly recommend leading that and providing feedback and see how it matches your specific requirements and needs. Uh, we already introduced, uh, as part of Accelera, we already introduced uh, this input format at the DiviCon conferences. The core concept, concrete code snippets with examples were shown and explained. These, by the way, are recorded and you can visit Accelera website, register and watch the recorded version of this. Highly recommended. This uh, session uh, triggered a lot of uh, interest and questions uh, in specific how does the rule-based randomization work? How do I model specific requirements and needs? What is the value of PSS? It's not straightforward uh, uh, for some and for some this is exactly what they were waiting for. Um, how is PSS different than UVM which is also an Accelera standard, right? And from our experience, the best way to understand PSS and the value is actually to see the technology in action. And this is what we're going to do in this session. We actually focus less on the input format. We will introduce it and then move to show the value and what you can get out of this technology. By the way, there's users out there using this core concept for years now with the Perspect technology that I'm going to demonstrate. It's a new methodology, a new paradigm. Uh, but it's doable and it's workable and proven in real projects. Some uh, uh, key clarifications before we start. Uh, this presentation does not include any information that was not shared yet of in any official uh, public Accelera presentation. We're not allowed to do so. As I mentioned, uh, we highly recommend joining Accelera and contributing. Um, PSS is not an official standard at this point. What was released was a review version. Uh, uh, the release is planned to the end of 2017, maybe the, be the beginning of 2018. The LRM is still subject to modifications. What you're going to see running in action in this demo uh, is aligned with the latest official publication and release that many of the concepts are coming from Perspex. All the new good ideas from us and from others as part of the Accelera, we quickly just tune the technology. Uh, we can check those, we can make sure that they're consistent with the subset that we that is already there in the PSS uh, and validate new ideas and of course we keep our technology on top of things. So without, let's go to the technical meet. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce uh, 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 some SOC environment, simplified, representative. We've designed that for the DVCon tutorial purposes, and this is actually going to see going to be the exactly the same system we're going to show at DAC as well. So what do we have in our system? We have uh, four cores CPUs that can do write, read, and copy from memory. The approach itself supports multi-threading. In this example, we do not assume multi-threading. So um, each core can do only write, read, or copy uh, at once. Uh, we have a, a DMA with multiple channels, 32 channels that can perform. The DMA can copy information from one memory location to another, but it can also serve a UART device that will transmit or receive information. And this is our UART device. We also have a graphic subsystem that can decode images or videos. And we have a crypto engine that can do encrypt and encrypt. So this is our DOT and we're sort of going to do evaluation and demonstrate how do I approach such uh, environment with PSS. The first thing you will do, uh, PSS is a model-based approach. We're first going to model high-level behaviors of the system that needs to be performed. This is fairly intuitive. All, you know, we already mentioned all of these before, so I'm just going to repeat them. We have a DMA that can do a transfer. We have a CPU that can do write, copy, or check, decode from the graphic subsystem, encrypt or decrypt from the crypto engine, and you are that can do read in and write out. So these are the components, and these are the 
actions that they can provide. On the second step, and this is when we get to use uh, the semantic that was provided in the first step, we're going to create activities to specify scenarios. So a scenario could be that the CPU write to memory, the DMA copy that to a different location, and maybe then copy that to the UR to be transmitted. That could be one use case, but I can create a lot of variations of this use case, changing the uh, CPU that is going to do the writing, the memory locations, the DMA channels that are going to be used, uh, and, and more, the size of the buffer, and more. So this is where we get a lot out of the modeling uh, investment, and we'll talk about that. And um, just to say, you can always take these existing use cases and scenarios and change the number of CPUs, change the number of channels, maybe have other components that can contribute that memory buffer or initial initialize that memory buffer in the memory and not the CPU. All these things could be changed. So what we're doing is adaptable, adaptable to system changes, to spec changes, to platform changes as we move from one platform to another and more. Uh, the scenario itself, and you're going to see that these are pure intent, as I said, very adaptable, very flexible, duty configuration environments and platform. And uh, here is our um, first code snippet. Uh, I took that from the official slides that we presented at Divicon. Um, we have our UART device in here that can do action right out. So it's a component UART action write out, which is basically getting information. It's an input from uh, our DMA and action read in, which is going to receive information and output that internally. Here's our DMA. We mentioned it has 32 channels. So this is what we do here. We define a resource of a channel and a pool of 32 channels. The actions that we have are mem to mem, mem to q if we want to feed our uart or q to mem get information from the uart and write to memory what you see here is just the memory to memory and, and you know you'll get the hand of it very quickly action mem to mem is basically saying i'm reading a data buffer i'm outputting a data buffer and i'm locking a channel as i do this mem to mem transfer and the constraint is saying that the size uh, of the source is exactly the same of size of the destination because all we do is a copy. So this is our DMA. Notice how concise, declarative uh, in nature these de declarations are. Here's our crypto engine. that should show a little bit more of modeling. Action encrypt. We are inputting a data buffer. We are outputting a data buffer. And we have constraint here on the blocks that we can operate on. So only 128 byte blocks. And you just specify that with a constraint. And since we don't want our crypto engine to do two encrypts, uh, we're saying here that the source must not be encrypted. And the destination is encrypted because this is what the encrypt action does. So here we are. We modeled a few of the subsystem, notice how concise this is. Now what you've seen before is a new language, domain specific language, this is PSS, but we did code that language, we code that language uh, um, in also a C++ library. So it's the same uh, approach, the same paradigm, the same primitive, the same language, but in a C++ style. So let's read it together. We have a UART component. Uh, here's the constructor. Uh, we define the UART as a resource as well. This, this is to achieve uh, um, the fact that you don't want to use the UART to do two operations at once. So we basically define a lock and each operation is going to lock the UART uh, for the duration of that operation. So here's our reading action. So you see that we derive from another action, constructor, we're locking the UART device, and we're outputting data stream in here, and we can put constraints. Here's the write out action, constructor, we're inputting the information, right? 
and uh, we're locking the UART device. Same thing, so just to reiterate, here's the uh, domain specific language, reading, write out, exactly the same. Uh, one of the purposes, the, the big purposes here is the user should be able to read, even if I chose to use the DSL or not the C++ or vice versa, it should be re easy to read and understand the other flavor if I want to integrate these two and make them work with one another. A little bit more modeling before we uh, go to the demo. CPU subsystem, how would I model that? Uh, here's our component CPU. Uh, you can see an example of object-oriented programming. So we can define an abstract action, a software operation, because we want to say that every software operation locks the core. As you remember, we assume no multi-threading for this specific project and setup. So now every action, check data, is also derived from software operation that's locking the core, but with check data, I need to read the memory buffer that is an input to the action. Action write data, derived from software operation, outputting a data buffer. Action copy data, derived from software operation, reads in data buffer, writes a data buffer, and you can see that the size is the same because we're just doing copy. And note here, this is how we define the structure of a compute subsystem. Notice how straightforward this is because of that level of abstraction. So we can associate attributes to resources. In this case, our core is a resource that can be used and it be locked, right? So what we use is a numerator tag for the core tag and a numerator tag for the cluster tag. And via constraint, we can say that if the cluster tag is cluster A, then the core is either A0 or A1. If the cluster tag is cluster B, the core tag is core B0 or core 1. And we just instantiate the four cores within our top components. This is what we do. So that's pretty much it. We kind of define the operation associated with the CPU cores and we instantiate them and even put structure and hierarchy on those. Now let's see how much value you can get out of this little modeling. So it seems like we haven't done much. We just wrote actions, inputs, and outputs, but there's tons of value that a tool, a PSS compliant tool can do with these simple declarations. And for that, uh, let's move to the demo.